If you clicked on this video, you must be in a bitter mood. If you weren't before, I'm sure you are now. Naturally occurring bases are known as alkaloids. Alkaloids typically have a bitter taste. When I talk about bases, you probably think of sodium hydroxide, sodium bicarbonate, and that one time a philosopher called you base, and you're still trying to figure out what they meant. Super bases are the opposite of super acids. Basically, there are these chemicals which are very strong bases, so strong that they get a special name. In day-to-day -day life, we have bases such as sodium bicarbonate, also known as baking soda. Another one is calcium carbonate, which is a type of antacid. This is useful for preventing acid reflux. Calcium carbonate is also present in eggshells, limestone, and chalk. But some chalks also have calcium sulfate in them. Sodium hydroxide is traditionally used for making pretzels, as it helps the dough brown. After the dough for a pretzel has been shaped into the shape of a pretzel, it's briefly washed in sodium hydroxide prior to cooking. This helps it get that nice brown color that you really want in a pretzel. Synthetic chemists use bases to build new molecules, and the super bases that have been developed are extremely useful for making new chemical compounds such as pharmaceuticals. In this video, we're going to discuss the comparative strength of bases, how prevalent their use is, and give some examples of where they're used and why people would choose to use them. Bases are really common in organic chemistry, and there are hundreds of bases which get commonly used. A super base is a souped up base. These bad boys will smack a proton off of almost anything you could conceivably consider as an acid. Wow! Even some that you wouldn't think of as very acidic. Super bases are super based, but do you know what else is super based? The sponsor of this video, Ground News. Interestingly, Ground News has been founded by a former NASA engineer who contributed to the development of the James Webb Space Telescope. In case you're wondering, Joey, why are you telling us about a news media outlet? Well, Ground News is not like any regular news outlet. They're not a news publisher, nor an editor. They simply provide tools which help readers compare different news sources covering the same story. They basically aggregate news articles from over 50,000 news outlets from different parts of the world and sort them by topic. If you're interested in how biased and factual the news article you're consuming is, they conveniently provide all this information right where you're browsing. This information concerning bias and factuality is provided by three independent news monitoring organizations, All Sides, Ad Fontes Media, and Media Bias Fact Check. They conveniently provide this information on a neat visual spectrum. Along with bias and fact checking, they also have another layer of analysis, which is called ownership categories. News outlets can oftentimes be funded by business entities and corporations who prioritize profits over precise journalism. So it's important to know about the sources of the funding for the information that we consume. They also have a browser extension available, and for any article that you're reading, they will conveniently provide all the aforementioned data in your browser, rather than revisiting their website and manually searching for the article yourself. Their plans are extremely affordable considering their services. You can use my link or go to ground.news slash thatchemist and use the code thatchemist to get 30% off your purchase. That way they'll know you came from here. I want to thank Ground News for their support of this channel. One of the most common super bases is sodium hydride. To look at the strength of a base, we look at the pKa of its conjugate acid. If its conjugate acid is a bad acid, then the corresponding base is considered to be a strong base. The conjugate acid of sodium hydride is hydrogen gas, which has a pKa of 35. That means that sodium hydride is a pretty strong base, but if you think that's strong, you can also have things like methyl lithium or terbutyl lithium. Alkanes tend to have a pKa around 50. That means that alkyl lithiums are some of the strongest bases that exist. Sometimes you can make a super base without a metal, and that can generate a so-called naked carbanion. Oftentimes when chemists discuss bases, instead of referring to a pKa, they'll write a pKbH. This is the same as pKa, but it demonstrates that we're talking about the base, which has a hydrogen bound to it. So that forms after a base deprotonates something, and that's how we're going to measure base strength. For example, a superbase is going to be defined as something that's more basic than proton sponge, which has a pKbH of 18.6. There's a number of different types of superbases, and in general, they tend to fall into four classes, although there are some exceptions. These classes of superbases include phosphazines, amidines, guanidines, and aminophosphines. Let's start with proton sponge. Proton sponge, also known as 1,8-bisdimethylaminonaphthalene, is a reasonably strong organic base, which is also sterically hindered. Normally, anilines are not very strong bases, but proton sponge is exceptional. It isn't very nucleophilic due to the steric hindrance on those two nitrogens, and this is a desirable property of a base, since we only want it to react with H+, which would be captured by the base, rather than competing side reactions where those nitrogens would attack at carbon or potential other electrophiles. There's a total of 1,787 documents on Reaxis which have used proton sponge, and this would include published papers, as well as patents. Now, while this might not be comprehensive, 
That means that it's a pretty well studied base, but it's not as well studied as some of the other ones on this list. Proton Sponge is definitely one of the coolest names on this list. In comparison to some of the actual super bases on this tier list, Proton Sponge has a pretty lame PKBH, and this is where we're scratching the definition of what a super base is. If it has a mid tier PKBH, that means that it isn't a very good super base, and so we're going to have to put it right into F tier. If any of these bases have a worse PKBH than Proton Sponge does, we can move it up into D tier and put the worse ones down below. The next base here is one that I never came across during my research. It's called Vercada Base, also known as Proaza Phosphatrain. This is such a strong base that it can even catalytically convert an oxime to a nitrile. There are other derivatives of Vercada Base where the methyl groups are replaced by other alkyl groups as well. There's a total of 260 documents using it on Reaxis. The pKBH of Vercada Base is 32.9 in acetonitrile. Not all of these bases have established pKAs, also known as pKBHs. For everyone on this tier list, I was able to find a pKBH in acetonitrile. So Vercada Base, because it has a pKBH of 33, that's pretty strong but it isn't as strong as the alkyl lithiums, so we'll probably have to put it into like B tier. B for base. Next we have Schweizinger's base, also known as TBU P4 or P4 TBU. This guy looks like he's trying to get the channel demonetized, and it has some advantages over some other contemporary bases that we see used in organic chemistry. For example, in this reaction, you can see that no alkylation products were observed when lithium diisopropyl amide was used, as well as when potassium HMDS or KMDS were used. However, when P4TBU was used, they still got a 28% conversion to the monoethylated product, as well as 14% conversion to the diethylated product. That means that those protons are not very acidic, and it requires a crazy strong base to even deprotonate them. Here's another example where LDA was used, but instead of having the reaction work the way the authors wanted, this just caused decomposition. So this definitely has some advantages over LDA. Schweizinger's base has a pKBH of 42.1 in acetonitrile, although some sources reported this to be 42.7. This is a crazy strong base, and if it's beating LDA, it's going to have to go at least in LDA tier. You can get this base as a solution. It's commercially available in hexanes, and there's 110 documents using it on Reaxis. The next base on this tier list is sodium hydride. This is the base we talked about earlier. Sodium hydride is commonly available as a dispersion in mineral oil. That might make you think that it's a liquid, but it's actually still a solid that you can weigh out. It's typically an off-white powder, and that 30% mineral oil just is wrapped around the sodium hydride salt. If you want to get rid of the mineral oil for some reason, you can just rinse off the sodium hydride with hexanes or another related nonpolar solvent. But be careful, if you choose anything that's reactive, you've got an ignition source and a fire, so only work with this if you're well trained. The nice thing about sodium hydride is it's a strong base, and when it deprotonates stuff, it forms hydrogen gas. Typically this is an irreversible reaction, meaning that if the reaction is still bubbling, the sodium hydride is still reacting. Sodium hydride is a kinetically slow base for many types of proton donors, which means that it can be annoying and often very slow. It's used as a base for the deprotonation of alcohols, phenols, amides, ketones, as well as esters. However, it is terrible solubility for a base. That means that people use it in polar solvents such as DMF or DMSO, which is dangerous because they can explode. So if you're doing any lab work and you're using DMF or DMSO with sodium hydride, you're going to need to have a chat with your supervisor. Otherwise, another viewer of the channel probably will. There's actually a paper in this journal called OPRD where they talked about just that. Here's an example of what this looks like. This is a picture from that paper where you can see this metal experimental testing apparatus, which we refer to as a calorimeter, was completely ruptured by this reaction. And if you think sodium hydride's scary, just wait till you hear about potassium hydride. At one of the universities I worked at, they actually had a lab burn down. So basically, here's the story. A student had a solution of potassium hydride in hexanes. There was a bit of mineral oil in there, and they were using the hexanes to wash it off. After they were done their experiment, they still had some potassium hydride in the hexanes mixed with mineral oil left. And they figured, oh, I have an idea, I can add water on top, and then it will slowly float to the top and react with the water. Little did they realize, water's actually more dense than hexanes, and potassium hydride is a salt, and it happens to be a dense salt. So what happened was the water went down to the potassium hydride, all of it quenched at once, and then it caught on fire, and then the hexanes caught on fire. Now, potassium hydride fires are not like your regular fire. You can't just put this out with a regular ABC fire extinguisher. You need a special type of fire extinguisher called a Class D fire extinguisher. So what happened next was the student used up their ABC fire extinguisher. In fact, they used up all three of the ones they had in the lab, and then they proceeded to go and use up an additional two fire extinguishers from neighboring labs. 
After they used up those fire extinguishers, they ran out of the building and their lab burned down. Sodium hydride is spooky, not as spooky as potassium hydride, but metal hydrides are very dangerous, so if you're ever preparing them, make sure you're equipped to deal with it safely. Sodium hydride's a strong base, but it isn't as good as Schweizinger's base, so I think we could probably put it into B tier. This is tert-butylithium. This is one of the scary bases that puts hairs on people's chest. This is a kinetically fast base. Terpbuli is an extremely useful but also extremely dangerous base because this stuff is pyrophoric and it spontaneously combusts in air. There was an incident where a chemist named Sherry Sanji passed away in an academic laboratory after a tragic incident involving terpbutylithium. This incident raised significant concerns about lab safety. She was a 23-year-old lab technician working at the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA. While this is a really dangerous base, sometimes terputolithium is needed so that you can selectively lithiate specific positions of molecules. Because terputolithium is so good at lithiating stuff, it's extremely useful in organic synthesis. There was a total of 3,856 documents on Reaxis using terputolithium. Personally, I think that that estimate's a little bit low, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's at least an order of magnitude higher than that. So terputolithium, it's a very strong base. It can go right into S tier, which is appropriate, because it's very scary. The next base on this list is called Barton's base, also known as BTMG. Most of the things you can do with this base are the same as what you can do with other bases. Barton's base is an example of a guanidine base. In a mixture of 50% water, 50% ethanol, Barton's base has a pKBH of 14. Meanwhile, in acetonitrile, it has a pKBH of 24.3. That means that this is a reasonably strong base, but because it can't really do things that other bases can't already do, this one doesn't deserve to go in too high of a tier. I think we can put it into C tier. Barton's base has only been featured in 660 documents on Reaxis. The next base on this tier list is BEMP. There's even been reports of BEMP bound to resins. Resins are polymers, and you might want a resin-bound reagent for various purposes in organic chemistry. Sometimes, chemists want to fix a reagent to a resin so that they can get an extra paper or a figure in one of their papers. Sometimes these polymer-bound reagents are useful, such as in the case of polystyrene sulfonic acid. In reality, there are several polymer-bound reagents which actually do find use, but some researchers are guilty of padding their papers with things that look good at a glance. BEMP has been featured in a total of 2,267 documents on Reaxis, meaning that it's more prevalent than proton sponge. The pKBH of BEMP is 27.6 in acetonitrile, meaning that it's relatively strong, about as strong as Barton's base. So for that reason, we can put it into the same tier, right into C tier. BEMP is a member of the phosphazine bases. Another phosphazine base is the next one, BTPP. BTPP is such a good base that it can even help form ethers, and it's been shown to work even on a nucleoside. There aren't as many papers using BTPP, as there's only 562 documents that have reported its use. The pKBH of BTPP is 28.4 in acetonitrile, but because it can do that alkylation chemistry I just mentioned, I think that this should go at least into B tier, because the alkylation of ethers is a pretty challenging reaction. Normally you need to use sodium hydride or potassium hydride, and those things are way too scary. Sodium hydride's not too bad, but it is if you put it in DMF, so again, please keep your DMF away from any sodium hydride. Next we have DBN. DBN is a relatively common base, but nowhere near as common as DBU. DBN and DBU are two of my favorite bases, and let me tell you why. Both of these are amidine bases, and they can do this type of chemistry, which readily eliminates a group such as a mesylate. There's also been examples where an alkyl iodide could be eliminated using DBN. Oftentimes people claim that DBN and DBU are non-nucleophilic bases. Meanwhile, they're approximately as nucleophilic as cyanide is, at least in acetonitrile. DBN has been reported in a total of 3,700 papers. DBN has a pKBH of 23.79 in acetonitrile. This one sees a fair amount of use, so I think it's going to be rated a little bit higher than the other ones in a similar range, so why don't we put that into B tier? In the case of DBU, it has a pKBH of 23.9 in acetonitrile. DBU is an extremely common superbase in organic synthesis. One case where it's used a lot is in the Horner-Wadsworth-Emmons reaction, also known as the HWE reaction. This is a convenient alternative to the Wittig. When DBU is used in combination with strictly anhydrous lithium chloride, it's possible to avoid the use of sodium hydride or potassium hydride, which, as we've already discussed, are very hazardous. I've used DBU before for the preparation of diazo compounds from tosyl azide. DBU is great. Overall, this is an S-tier base, even if its strength warrants otherwise. DBU has been used in a total of 16,104 documents. DBU, you're not as strong as some of the other bases, but you're number one in our hearts. Here we have MTBD. This is another guanidine-type base. 
MTBD has a pKBH of 25.43 in acetonitrile. Oftentimes, we just say the abbreviations for chemicals because it's too cumbersome to say the whole thing. For example, MTBD stands for 134678-hexahydro-1-methyl-2H-pyrimido-1,2-alpha-pyrimidine. Now, I bet you sure are glad that I said MTBD instead of 134678-hexahydro-1-methyl-2H-pyrimido-1,2-alpha-pyrimidine, because that's a much longer name. There's even cases where MTBD provided better results for some experiments than DBU did. This is another one that could be used as a base for the horner wadsworth emmons or the Wittig reaction. There's a total of 2,874 documents using MTBD. Because it's almost as good as DBU, and there's even been cases where it compares to DBU, I think we can put it into A tier, even though the PKBH is a little bit lower. We've now reached the part of the video, which is the speed round. First, we have P1TBU. Honestly, when I looked at the chemistry that's been done with this before, I wasn't too impressed, but it has been used in a total of 411 documents. This has a pKBH of 26.88 in acetonitrile, meaning that this is another relatively strong one. Still kind of boring like BEMP, so this can go into C tier. Similar to P1TBU, we have P1T oct. Instead of this tert butyl group, we just have this tert octal group. These are some more phosphazine bases, and the tert octal one has a pKBH of 26.49 in acetonitrile. Believe it or not, this one's only been featured in 10 documents, which means that if any scientists are watching this right now, this might be one that you might be interested in looking into. This one's not super well studied, and the pKBH is more or less the same, so we can put this into D tier. Not super well studied, not a super useful base. I think the name of this one's pretty appropriate because it kind of reminds me of Dr. Octopus. Now the P1 in the name means that there's one phosphorus. Whoa, that was complicated. And these next ones have P2, and you're never going to believe this. There's two phosphoruses in them. These people are starting to get good in names. So P2ET has a total of 100 documents using it. Now compared to the other bases, this one has a pKBH of 32.94. This is starting to get pretty strong. This is almost as strong as sodium hydride. Now whether or not this is organic, you could kind of argue, but I think that this counts as organic because there's a bunch of methyl and ethyl groups. And if there's a methyl group, it's organic. I don't care what you have to say in organic chemists. So for that reason, I think we can put it into like B tier, same tier as sodium hydride, but it's just not super well studied yet. A similar one is P2TBU, where instead of this ethyl group, we just have this tert butyl group. This one's been studied even less, only being featured in 76 documents. Now, when we go from P2ET to P2TBU, the pKBH goes from 32.94 up to 33.49. That's roughly five times stronger of a base. I didn't mention this earlier, but if you're familiar with pKAs and pKBHs, it's a logarithmic scale. So if something goes up by one unit, that means that it's 10 times weaker of an acid when the conjugate acid is present. And that means that the corresponding base is 10 times stronger than the corresponding base, which would have a pKBH one unit lower. So because this goes up by 0.5, that means that this is five times stronger of a base than P2ET. So this is starting to get pretty strong. For that reason, I think we can put this into A tier. Now, when we get to P2T oct, there's actually only one paper reporting its use, and this was the paper that created it. Fortunately, the authors did the legwork of determining the pKBH for us, and the pKBH is 33.27, a little bit worse than P2TBU, and for that reason, we're going to put it into B tier. B for boy, I sure wish someone would actually study this. A bit of a change of pace, though, is TMG, tetramethylguanidine. This is a guanidine base. This base has been used to form cyclopropanes before, and it can even be used as a base for the Bayless-Hillman reaction, as well as Henry reactions. In fact, this can even form something called an ionic liquid, in the form of TMG lactate and related salts. So since this can be a room temperature ionic liquid, that's kind of cool. Ionic liquids are really cool, and it's an underfeatured area of chemistry. You can basically just use an ionic liquid instead of a typical solvent, which can be desirable for some processes. TMG has been used in a total of 2009 references, meaning that it's relatively prevalent. At least it's more prevalent than proton sponge, since that one only had close to 1,800. TMG has a pKBH of 13 plus or minus 1 in water, but it has a pKBH of 23.3 in acetonitrile. This is like a medium strong base, and so for that reason, I think we can put it into C tier. C4, I can't even see why you're so popular. We have three spicy ones for last. This is what I like to call Pandora's Phosphazine, because looking at this is an absolute nightmare, and this isn't even what it looks like in 3D. This is just the easiest way I could draw it in 2D. This has only ever been featured in two papers, one in 1993 and another in 1996. 
Once again, the random chemists that made this came through. This has a pKBH of 46.9 in acetonitrile. That means that this is about as strong of a base as an alkyl lithium. This is a smoking hot base. This is super S tier, and I can't believe that this hasn't been studied since 1996. What are we doing, chemists? Come on. This looks crazy. It's a crazy strong base, and no one's looking at it. So I think there's some work to do. Last but not least, we have these two really obscure but beautiful looking bases. One has an alkene and one doesn't in this position, so I think that we should call this one a vinamidine because there's an ene for an alkene, and we can call this one a vinamidine because it's like a pyrrolidine, the hydrogenated version. And if you're thinking to yourself, wait, you can just call the alkene an ene, but then if it's hydrogenated, you can call it ene with an I and pronounce it the same way, that's pretty dumb. Yep. In this case, when we have the double bond, the pKBH is 31.94 in acetonitrile. Meanwhile, when we only have the single bond there, it drops by almost two full units to 30.03 in acetonitrile. So that means that this little double bond here makes this base 100 times stronger than the corresponding alkane version. And despite this, almost no one's ever seen these because these have only been reported in one paper. So if you're a viewer of the channel and you're seeing this right now, you've seen this before almost every single chemist in existence. So congratulations. That means that you get to be an honorary member of the Mile High PKA Club. <laughs> These haven't been studied that much, but I'm hopeful that chemists will study them some more in the future. So for that reason, we can put them right into A tier. A for A, finally got a research project. In this video, we discussed a number of superbases, which are so basic that they could deprotonate protons in almost any context. Superbases play an important role in organic synthesis, and while DBU tends to be the most well-studied among these, these are all extremely valuable reagents for organic synthesis, for the development of new materials and pharmaceuticals, which helps the engine of scientific discovery roll forward. By watching this video, you're helping that engine move forward as well. So I'd like to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.